I don't feel I have ownership over them. I see them; they are my partners yes. along the same journey,、mm-hmm. however long it would take or however short it would take,、mm-hmm. right? And I'm here to serve the better good,、yep. to to help the student, help the faculty, help the society. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Empire Podcast. Interviews, where we like to interview everyone from pastors to actors, rappers to trappers, and everybody in between. And yes, today, folks, we have another great guest. But before we get into it, you know what to do: like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to do some good stuff. We're informing you guys. We're doing some things that never been done out here, and、uh, we appreciate you. That's number one.、Uh, my name is Antonio Lee Miles, your host. You know about it. Put some respect on the name, and、uh, yeah. Let's just get right into our amazing, esteemed guest, beautiful woman, the Dean of College of Arts and Letters at Cal State University San Bernardino, Dr. Railing Shuang. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Railing. Thank you. Thank you for interviewing me. Of course. And、um, how's your day been so far today? It's great. It's a little bit cold, but the sun is out. It feels great. I know. Thank goodness we still live in、uh, California, right? Yes, yes. There's yes. there's people out there right now that are like shoveling snow.、Mm-hmm. Can you imagine shoveling snow to get out of your driveway? Oh, I did that. I lived in Minnesota before, so I remember all oh, that. Oh, so you 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 starting in October, I shovel the the snow、wow. on the long driveway. It's very very cold. It's、yes. probably terrible. Yes, yes. So yes, every day I look at the blue sky. You、mm-hmm. know. In December or January or February, I thank my lucky stars. I'm in California. Right, California. <laughs>、uh, they say you pay for the you pay for the weather, right? Yes, that's correct.、Um, so,、um, you know, one of the things that I like about coming into your office, and by the way, thank you for allowing me to be here、mm-hmm. and be in your office interview, is I just love all the like, you know, the Asian symbol, the symbolisms, like、mm-hmm. right here. People、mm-hmm. can't see this right here. What does actually this say above us? Um, this is actually done、um, by a Chinese calligrapher、okay. expert.、Um, uh, so for the Chinese calligraphy is considered as an art. Definitely. And it actually these four、um, Chinese characters or phrase is exactly the same one when Michelle Obama when she visited China. Okay. And then one of the calligraphy artists wrote the same thing. So literally, it means that. And and the way I pre I perceive it is, if you have good virtue, okay, you know,、um, then would carry you far.、Mm. And some people might have different interpretation.、Um, the you know good virtue bring you、um, wealth, material stuff. Okay, so it, it really depends on the context and how you interpret it. But essentially, it, it it's a good phrase that. You know, to kind of remind people to have good virtue. Got you. And、mm-hmm. virtue is kind of like like good morals and stuff like that. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was watching、um, this、uh, YouTube channel, and I forget what they're called, but they're saying like,、um, like the calligraphy paint brushes, like the traditional、yes. ones.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's becoming like a a lost art form.、Mm-hmm. Like that, but but because they make it out of like certain like hairs, and it takes like. Mm-hmm. Like hours and days for it to be done, but the craft is kind of getting like replaced by the industrial eyes.、Mm-hmm. Yes, that's correct. But、yeah. the but the quality of the brush can never be as good as the traditional.、Mm-hmm. And even like the art form of calligraphy is kind of also yes disappearing and right right. It's kind of like an art form that maybe older generations are more. Focusing on, but for the younger generation, right? Everything just type, you know,、yeah. on cell phone, and so people don't appreciate that kind of、um, practice as more、yeah. as for the younger people. I I remember growing up in Taiwan.、Um, part of my middle school and high school assignments is each week we have to write the calligraphy、uh-huh. as part of our weekly assignment. Yeah. It's probably like how handwriting used to be taught in schools here <laughs>、yes, before, but it's not.、Mm-hmm. You know, I. This is my opinion. I feel like maybe if, since kids don't see like monetary value in it,、mm-hmm. they don't want to do it because everything's like 
is it cool or can I make money from it? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, this is an art form, a skill. Mm -hmm. And it's part of like the culture, mm -hmm. you know, to keep alive. Yes. yes right. Yes. Um, so hopefully there's still like little pockets of people who are still interested in doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, for for people who don't know um, who you are, Dr. Rayling, can you please tell everyone who you are mm -hmm. and what you do? Okay. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for asking this Great question. Um, so I alluded already. I, I was born in Taiwan, and um, I came to United States to get um, a graduate degree. So I I really didn't think that I I would actually go this far. I first I came here. I just simply you know I wanna I wanna explore San Francisco Bay Area. So I. I just oh, I have a friend who study at Cal State Hayward. Then now it's called Cal State East Bay. Mm -hmm. And since I was the only person in my family to study United States, I just feel like I want to choose a place that has probably more Chinese people and have a friend there, so I don't feel lonely. Mm -hmm. So that's why I pick Cal State. East Bay mm -hmm. as um, my place to study for my graduate program. And so I have a master's degree in speech communication at Cal State East Bay. Back then it's Cal State Hayward. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, first I just thought I'm just going to explore. I really didn't think that I would ever become an educator. And But when I was studying at Cal State Hey, were there was a, such a great experience. I have in, um, a professor who encouraged me to uh, go on and pursue uh, my PhD degree, and then um, I thought, wow, I feel honored that she that I was asked to give it a try. So I I try, and then then I become a professor, and then um, I taught in Minnesota before I came here. I came here in 2000, so this is my 22nd year at Cal State mm -hmm. San Bernardino. And it was a great journey for me. Again, I didn't expect that I'll become a dean. So I guess something happened. And um, so um, so I was asked to be the, the first the associate dean of the college. And then I became the intern dean and then the permanent dean. Of the college mm -hmm. that is so awesome mm -hmm. what a beautiful story it was it was meant to be as we like to say yes do you believe in a uh, destiny um as a buddhist i i believe in karma maybe okay. there, there's some sort okay. of cosmic connection perhaps right um i i i believe there's a sense of free will right okay. for example um when I went on the PhD program or started teaching here, obviously when I was a student, right, um, of course I overcome a lot of obstacles. There's a lot of obstacles, you know, trying to learn the, the language and try to write, study very difficult material like classical rhetoric, contemporary rhetoric. Oh, for communications, yeah. Yes, wow. right. And uh, different theories. So there was hard work right so i believe there's a free will there's a perseverance to overcome obstacles mm -hmm. but i do believe there's a little bit of luck sometimes it's more like also being the right place right time mm -hmm. and when the opportunity present itself to you not to shy away from it and take the chance give yourself a chance i think that's also very important so yeah. i think i'm where i am a lot of it because along the way, I have a lot of, um, you know, people who help me, right? The professor who saw some potential in me that yes. I didn't even see myself. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even think that I would go for a PhD. I would never imagine I'll be a professor. I'll never imagine I ever will become a dean, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody helped me along the way who gave me the chance, who saw potential in me. Some people who help me maximize maximize my potential. Mm -hmm. I think that is very helpful. So and um, so I see that the kind of comic connection, the way you yeah. know, that being 
the the position where you you, you meet the right people who help you along the way, mm-hmm. and and the timing sometimes is of essence, right? Yeah, definitely. Right, and for example, how I met my husband. I met my husband at my university. It's the same thing. It is is kind of kind of weird cosmic connection. I have met him years before, but we didn't connect, and then we reconnected again on campus, and it it was at the right time for both of our lives mm-hmm. to be together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's so cool. Like, um, I like to, I definitely want to talk more about Buddhism, uh, uh-huh. um, but I, one of the, <clears throat> okay, two things. One of my favorite um, philosophies in Buddhism is um, life is suffering, mm-hmm. right? And, but it's only, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because uh-huh. you're obviously in it. Um, you know, suffering comes from wants, right? Mm -hmm. So the more wants you have, the more suffering you have. Right. So by eliminating your your desires and your wants, you eliminate the suffering in your life. Right. Yes. Um, so that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite ones, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you eliminate all the things that you want, the Maya, then you can, um, eliminate the sufferings in your life. Right. You know, and I, I really like that one. Um, for for free will, I definitely I definitely agree that we have free will. Mm-hmm. I actually think free will is mankind's best friend and worst enemy mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. same time, mm-hmm. um, because you can see that hey, that's a I should do that. It's a good thing to do, but then you can choose not to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I believe that free will and destiny kind of live together mm-hmm. because um, whatever, you, like no one's telling you hey, open that door right now. But if you decide to open that door, mm-hmm. you were destined to open that door, even though it was your free will to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that make any sense? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And also, for example, for my case is when I was over another Cal State position mm-hmm. and I vacillated, it took me a long time to decide whether I want to take this San Bernardino job or at Cal State Stanislaus. Mm-hmm. And I eventually decided to come here. Right? Mm-hmm. And I often wonder if I had a ch- chosen a different path, if um, I had gone to Cal State Stanislaus. Then what's, what's, where's that located in? It's in Turlock. It's, oh, wow. in, it's closer to San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, okay. And I think it's closer to Yosemite <clears throat> okay. around the area. Yeah, because I often wonder if I had taken a different um, path, I may not be where I am right now. I may not be talking to you because I'll be in Stanislaus. Yeah, you'd be that's there. Right. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have you here. Yes, it was right. destined. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that's so awesome. Um, so, Dr. Rayling, I know we talked a little bit about your origin, but I really would like, you know, if you can give us a brief synopsis so we can get a little bit more about you, about your origin story. Mm-hmm. So, basically, where you grew up, how you grew up, and how you ended up becoming. The dean. I know you told us a little bit about it, you know, um, but can you give us a little origin story about how it was growing up? You said in Taiwan, right? Yes, that's and right. And then moving here and, you know, just a little bit. Can you give us a little more backstory about the sure. origin story? Sure. Right. Thank you so much for asking about origin story. Of course. So um, so I, I was born in Taiwan mm-hmm. and my um, my my parents, they're also, um, they were born in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. But if you try to trace it, you know, genealogical kind of um, um, background for my family is, you know, most people who live in Taiwan, they migrated from mainland China. And, okay. and so for my my ancestors, they live in the um, south um, eastern part of China and they, they migrated. Do you know why they why people migrated? It, it, well, in the in the coastal area, it's very very common um, for for some uh, Chinese people to to move to Taiwan. Sometimes maybe for economical situation, mm-hmm. and and so my ancestors they moved from China, Fujian province to Taiwan. Mm-hmm. In um, 18th century, 19th century, wow. and my um, family's background probably traced way back to um, probably 200 BC in the in the Chinese history. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So my last name, there's a very famous Chinese philosopher and a Chinese king in 200 BC. Okay. And so we're wow. proceed to be the descendant of the Chinese king called Chu Zhuangwang or the Chinese um, philosopher Zhuangzi. You, you may have um, read about his philosophy. He's one of the very famous Taoist okay. um, philosopher for Chinese ancient philosophy. And so, um, but my my parents um, and their their parents and you know, so they they live in Taiwan you know, starting from the, about nineteenth century. And um, so I I grew up speak uh, Taiwanese mm -hmm. dialect. And then when Chiang Kai Shek, um, the, you know the the civil war between China where the um, the Kuomintang, so one of the party, um, they retreat to Taiwan, That's and so then we call them the mainlander. They 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 migrate from mainland China to Taiwan. There was a civil war in China. Yes, and there's some, yeah going on for a long time, okay. and that's when the eventually communists took over, right, mm -hmm. in China. ECP. And so it's very interesting that they're kind of going up the dynamic that um, going on speaking um, Taiwanese dialect. Mm -hmm. um, that again, just like the United States, that the real native in Taiwan is actually uh, indigenous people, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're, they maybe have come from the Pacific Islander. And, and so most the people in Taiwan they all migrated from, most of them migrated from China. It's just at different time, right? Mm. Before communists took over China or, or after, right? And, and so growing up, there's always this kind of, um, the language identity, for example, for people who speak um, the Taiwanese dialect versus people who speak Mandarin Chinese. Mm. And so growing up, um, when I was young, I speak Taiwanese at home, but when I went to elementary school, and then we would be asked to um, speak Mandarin. So mm. so definitely the notion of our language identity is, is and political, how does language identity affect political identity? Yeah. It is, for me, it's very relevant, it's very resonating. And, and you could see that that played out in, for example, doing the the election time in Taiwan, people mm -hmm. always talk about it, and you will have the the politician, the candidates that would purposely choose a specific kind of language to form the sense of you know identity mm -hmm. um, with the voters. Yeah, and so th that's part of kind of experience growing up. Um, my parents, they lived through Japanese colonization eras because the Japanese colonized Taiwan before. Wow. And so my parents' generation, they also speak Japanese because they were colonized okay. by Japan. They had no choice. Yes. And so growing up, so I have that kind of very interesting identity mm -hmm. watching my parents being colonized by the Japanese people and they have this sense of the nostalgia sometimes toward the Japanese culture. Okay. And then I also see this kind of um, dialectical tension between Taiwanese people mm -hmm. and versus people who um, migrated to Taiwan after the communists took over China. Mm -hmm. So th th that sense of identity is very fluid. And also, it's kind of complex. Very. And but what I want to say is because my parents lived through that kind of deprivation when they were colonized by Japan, mm -hmm. and so that that sense of perseverance is a very important thing. Very. And growing up, I try to kind of rebel against my parents, mm -hmm. but then as I get older, I really could see. Oh my gosh! I'm acting more and more like my parents. You know, as you get I'm, older, right, right. <laughs> their value, their work ethic, right, and so the notion of um, working hard, uh, try to overcome, you know, those kind of obstacles, um, become a very important part of my psychic, part of my moral compass. I mm -hmm. would say mm -hmm. that the sense of responsibility that. 
um, all the Confucius value. You know, it was very deeply ingrained in me when we were young. We studied Confucius philosophy. You know, always being trying to be pious. You know, gotcha. be can you give beautiful. us some example of uh, Confucius Confucianism? Um, part of that is like, a, for example, being pious, right? Okay. Um, um, the, the sense of um, there, that sense kind of social order, you know. Okay. The okay. guy, um, <clears throat> even your family relationship. Gotcha. Um, like a hierarchy. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, perseverance, forbearance, and the importance of education, mm -hmm. and that sense of responsibility, gotcha. and that, and I think one of the big important thing that I could see because I've been living in the United States. Uh, since 1989, the big interesting um, issue for me now that I'm living between two cultures, the Chinese culture, right, and the American culture, the Confucius society is more focused on you have to think about other people. Yes. Always, always being considerate, always think about... Um, not just me, me, me. You mm -hmm. have to think about what you could do for the country, what you could do for other people. Got you. Where the United States culture is more individualist. Selfish. Right? Um, or more focused on individual needs, right? Mm -hmm. And so you could see that the growing up, I always were taught, don't just think about yourself, you think about other people. Where United States, um, the, the cultural value is you need to take care of yourself. Right, mm -hmm. um, if you couldn't take care of yourself, then you could not take care of other people. So I'm not saying which culture value is better. I I think both are important, right? Yeah. Um, is and it's just part of kind of cultural programming. I would say, mm -hmm. you know, from the intercultural communication scholars' point of view, it's part of our cultural mental programming. Yeah. Growing up in Taiwan or in Chinese culture, I was taught or I was mentally programmed to, you know, always think about other people. Where in United culture, it's important to, to think about taking care of yourself. Self-care is yeah. important, right? Yeah. So Can I give my take on that, really? Sure. So <clears throat> this is just my opinion. I think I haven't lived anywhere else, but I think the community aspect is, is more beneficial Yeah. because I think Americans take the, the selfish approach so mm -hmm. much. They're like, it becomes greedy, where I only mm -hmm. want to, I only care about me, I only care about my well-being, and it sh and it actually you can actually see the degradation of American society because nobody is actually looking into how can I make my, me and my family better, mm -hmm. how can I make me and my community better, mm -hmm. how can I make me and my state better, my country better, mm -hmm. as opposed to let me just worry about me, they'll figure it out, mm -hmm. and I think that's why Chinese culture. The family unit's very strong, mm -hmm. right? And you can look, or even a lot of other Western cultures, the, the American, I mean, other cultures that are not Westernized, mm -hmm. the family unit is very strong, mm -hmm. as opposed to Westernized cultures, the family unit. Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine trying to put your uh, parents in a home in Eastern cultures? Mm -hmm. That's not a thing, really. You know, when I'm talking about like a senior home living, right? Right, yes. Or if they have to... Oh, they're in the situation. They have to put their family, their elders, their 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 parents or mm -hmm. grandparents at nursing home. There's also this tremendous guilt. There's this immense guilt that having have to put their parents, you know, in the nursing home. Yeah. Yeah. But in America, it's like, <laughs> I can't wait to put you in a home. <laughs> I can't wait to get rid of you. Mm -hmm. You know, and so just my opinion, mm -hmm. I think the community thing is better because... If um, you're looking out for someone, then naturally someone else is also looking out for you. Mm -hmm. So there, there's this sense of, you know, more like communal things, right? Yes, yeah. And um, so I'm not saying which culture is better or not. Yeah, but I'm opinion. just saying mm -hmm. um, for me, living in two cultures, I'm constantly trying to find a balance. Yeah. Right? That, there's, that, that become part of my identity is um, should I... Uh, focus on self care, or should I always walk extra mile mm -hmm. to you help know, for the else. better good of the community? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What well, a torn right between the two, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
And so what age did you um, decide to leave Taiwan and then come to America? I, um, after my, I got my bachelor's degree. And so around 23, 24, that's when I really felt like I kind of want to explore. Okay, you know? okay. And um, so I actually work in a um, mass media company where I used to make karaoke MTV videos. Okay, wow. Yes, and I also taught um, English. Okay. And I just felt like um, I just want to explore the world. Got gotcha. you. Know? And I, I did study abroad when I was in the college. I had a BA in German. So wow. I studied in Europe. Well, in Deutsch? Germany. Yes. Wow. Upper Natürlich. And so I, I studied in German and, um, and, um, I studied in Germany and, um, and, for uh, a summer, it was a really a transformative experience for me. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I really encourage everybody to go for study abroad. It's such a life-changing, transformative experience. So I did a, the study abroad, and and I, I travel in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought, you know, I, I've been to Europe. I studied in Germany before, and I would like to explore the United States. I know, and America's why, next. Yes, mm -hmm. that's why. Again, Totally serendipities, right? Uh -huh. I never planned that I would stay here forever, you know. But you just wanted to put your your toe in the water and come back out. Yes, again, it's just trying to explore. Got gotcha. you. And, and that's that's where I am now. So. Got gotcha. you. It mm -hmm. went from just a taste of the water to like soaking in the hot tub. Exactly. I. <laughs> that's why I chose. Remember San Francisco Bay Area, right? Mm -hmm. A place I have a friend. A, a place I feel like there's some sort of Asian community. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have to travel far to get Chinese food, right? Yeah, some good so, ones, yeah. Yes, right. And that's why I, I did what I did. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Because you mentioned, um, oh, there's so much, that um, your parents were colonized by the Japanese, right? Yes. So did that affect, like, the food and also, like, when oh, the, yes. everything else came in? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, definitely. That's why... Um, in Taiwan, you, you see this fusion of the Japanese and Chinese and Taiwanese cuisine, and you see a lot of Japanese um, restaurants in Taiwan mm -hmm. a lot. Um, even I, I told you about even in our in our daily conversation languages, um, we still pick on some of the war. That the Japanese use, mm -hmm. for example, growing up, my parents, when they say slipper, they would say slipper. And um, when they say bed, they would say beddo. I, I guess it's because Japanese and their language, the, and they somehow end it with A-E-I-O-U. Mm -hmm. Right, and so they would say, um, "Oh, when we say milk, and they would say minuku," and and mm -hmm. so and that's sort of kind of integrated into Taiwanese dialect as well, uh, at least for my parents' generation. So we would use the word like bed is bed, and slipper for slipper, mm -hmm. um, hambagu for hamburger. You know, okay, kind of interesting. Thing. Yeah, so you you see that kind of cultural adaptation of the some of the Japanese language that that embedded into some of the our daily language. Wow. Yes. You know what? Also curious in my mind is like, did you learn German first or English first? Um, when I was in middle school and high school, we all had to learn English. Okay. And then when I went to college. Um, then I learned German, and when I came to here, I had to revert back to learn English, English again. Gotcha. Yes. Why German? Out of all the languages, why German? Oh, that that was because in in back in my time, mm -hmm. um, we when we try to go to college, you had to take college entrance exam. It's very competitive, mm -hmm. and you had to be a certain kind of top percentile. Um, during my era, for example, statistically speaking. If you want to get into arts and humanity field, when you take the college entrance exam, you almost had to be at the top 12 percentile okay. to be able to get into arts and humanities field. The wow. percentage higher is for people who want to go to natural science because simply there are more colleges, more departments that has natural science related. Mm -hmm. But for arts and humanities, there are fewer colleges, fewer departments. So essentially, your life is just determined by that one single college entrance exam. 
Wow. Yes. And of course, then you could take a transfer exam after you got into college. Gotcha. And so learning German was part of helping keep becoming better? Um, learning German was because I was assigned. Right. Oh, you were assigned have, yes, to learn yes. German. Uh -huh. So first, I'm um, actually based on college entrance, and I so I got into the Chinese opera major, okay. and then in my first year, and then second year, um, I was a transfer student. I took the transfer exam, and I was assigned to a different university for the German wow. major. Okay, yeah. wow. and which is work out great for me. I, I growing up when I was a teenager, I always loved German literature. So okay. I, I read a lot of German um, author, for example, Thomas Mann, Death in Venice, and Hermann Hesse. Okay, you know, you know Damien, and um, so um, I love some of the German writers. So it, it works out great. Again, see, it's meant to be. Hey, there it is. The free will takes you places. Yeah. Um, so you, so you've been involved in the arts. Yes. For years. Yes. So, what is your first, or what was your first artistic passion? I would say. First, I'm not really artistic, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, my. I think my <clears throat> my first um, passion actually is the Chinese theater and a movie. Okay, take your time. Yeah, take your time. And my parents had they feel that back then, right? Um, again, this is part of cultural upbringing. They're worried that if I am a theater major or Chinese opera major, they're worried I won't be able to. Make, Make a, a living. living, yeah. So yeah. they say, you got to change to a different major. Mm -hmm. That's why I took the transfers exam. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, um, the film, literature, and theaters are always my passion. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. But now looking back, I'm actually kind of happy that I'm not a Chinese opera major because <laughs> I don't think I'm that talented. Okay. <laughs> yes. So I would never be a great Chinese opera singer, which take a long, many years of training. Mm -hmm. So my interest is more like the, the the background, you know, the production aspect gotcha. yeah, of the theater like or being, filmmaking. Okay, like a producer and stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how cool, historian even possibly, mm -hmm. right? That's so cool because I'm not sure if it's kabuki, which I think is Japanese yes. theater, right? Yes. Is, is so... Kabuki's all all male, right? Is that correct? correct? Yes. That doesn't apply to Chinese theater, right? Um, actually, for Chinese theater, some of the very Chinese famous um, Chinese opera singer are actually a male Chinese opera actor performing females character. Oh, interesting. So yeah, it's like still, one of the it still exists. Wow. Yes, yes. But now, uh, during my time, mm -hmm. then um, actually, there's a, very interesting. If you now look at it, you you actually see that gender fluidity. You you see, like even when I was a student, right? We had male classmates in the Chinese opera. They they perform female character, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. almost like female sopranos character yes. when they sing, right? And they are very feminine. But I also have female classmates. They play um, male character, like the famous Chinese opera Monkey King. Okay. So they play the uh, more like acrobatic character or... Um, so they, they do a lot of um, kind of Chinese martial art movement, mm -hmm. right? So I I also see female actor performing male characters. Well. Yeah. Okay. So the Chinese opera, that gender fluidity is actually um, very pronounced. Gotcha. And do the men sing high, like, like a woman, like how the... Are they castrados? Yeah. Are they castrados? Yes, yes. When they yes, because when they perform the Chinese opera, um, that's why it takes many years of training, mm -hmm. right? So there's that kind of acrobatic movement and their dance movement, right? Yeah. And they also sing, and the Chinese opera, 
um, their lyric is just like a poem, right? Mm -hmm. So each sentence is is kind of like a、um, a line in a poem. Gotcha.、Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, so awesome. I know. We'll talk more about her being a yeah, dean. Yeah, it's like the Chinese characters, right?、You、up see, there,、uh -huh. um, up there, right? So you see over there,、um, Mu Guing is a one of the very famous Chinese characters. Yeah, so which one's Mu Guing? That one on the far over, right, right? Okay. And so normally,、um, so you could see female actor could play this role, and I also have classmates or upper classmates、mm -hmm. who are men actually also performing. That、the、role. female's character, yes,、mm. and and he, he um, he was very very feminine. The way he performed, in a way, gotcha, even more feminine than some of my female classmates. Gotcha.、Yes. Mm -hmm. Which, if anyone, if anyone was probably closer to having the gender fluidity, it definitely would be in the arts and the theater. Yes, it definitely, would, yeah, especially you、there. see that in the Chinese.、Mm. So it's not just kabuki theater、mm -hmm. where where you feel you see a male character performing female character in the Chinese opera. It's the same thing,、yeah. and you also have female character playing very acrobatic,、um, you know,、um, kind of martial art character.、Gotcha. Yeah, we call <clears throat> wu shen. What's the name?、Um, one of the characters wu shen、uh -huh. wu is like Chinese kung fu. Okay,、uh -huh. right? Oh,、uh, wu gong, right? And Shen is the character, so so you 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 could have a male or female、um, actor or actress playing the, the character because the Chinese opera they they have very clearly defined kind of role,、mm -hmm. and then some of the role is like a female role, right? Female that has very、um, like a righteous. Uh, value and character. Okay. And we also have one character. It's more like acrobatic. So they do a lot of kind of almost Chinese kung fu kind of movement. Cool. They they do the somersault and they they flip their you know and jump and all this thing. Interesting. Yes. You know the whole、um, <clears throat> men playing female roles. It's interesting because it also exists like in European too. Yes. They do the same thing where they had only only males playing female roles as well. So it's very、yes. very very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to speak on、um, becoming a dean, right? Yes.、Um, so you said that you initially started off as an associate dean. Is that correct? Correct. What is that?、Um, associate deans for the university, normally at least for our college arts and letters, sometimes will be in charge of、um, student grievances. So, for、okay. example, if student have Uh, complain about faculty. Normally,、mm. that would be associating's job, at、okay. least in our college. Okay. And so,、uh, associating also manage the space. What does that mean?、Um, like classroom allocation, right? Okay.、Uh, especially at at, I think probably I would say all Cal State University space is always an issue. Okay. Not having enough classroom. Right,、mm -hmm. and so part of associating's job is to to find classrooms and works the department chair in terms of finding classroom, the scheduling,、mm -hmm. um, and managing the curriculum revision,、um, and、um, also for our college, the associating will be managing also our IT. Okay, that's the、um, like the internet technology. Yes. Okay.、Uh, so supervising our our IT consultants. Wow. Troubleshooting、uh, technology related problems. Yes.、Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's part of the college and letters. Yes. Yeah.、Oh, wow. Oh, I mean, each each college has also you know the their IT consultant. Okay. They're dealing with okay. Faculties, their computer problem, printer problems, and in our college actually, our IT does. More complex job because different department have different requirement, right?、Mm -hmm. For example, arts, they need the designs, three D printing, three D fabrication. Yes. Where the music, as you know, you、mm -hmm. know, right? Music、uh, technology needs are different,、mm -hmm. right?、Mm -hmm. The equipment needs are different, right? Say sound editing, right?、Uh -huh. And where the 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 come study, they had the、um, the video. And、uh, um, 
radio stations, right, yes, and news, yes. newspaper, or the English department, their language lab. May have this. So, so our IT consultant, they really need to know different field. Mm -hmm. It's in a way, it's much more complex than say business school. It makes a lot they of just sense. have computer. They just need for the faculty's computers, right? Yeah. Where ours is much more discipline specific. Got you. Much more layered. Yes. Um, yes. You know, it's when I was a student here, because you know, you guys probably heard the bell ringing in the background. Yes. Um, you know, I'm a music nerd. I'm not. I'm proud to say it. Um, I was trying to figure out for the longest time how how can I talk to someone to to program a song because I wanted to like write a song <laughs> to play for the bell. I couldn't find anybody. But I think I may have found someone to connect me with somebody, maybe. Maybe. I hope so. Yeah, maybe talk to some IT people. Um, but then you said you went from associate dean to intern as dean? Interim dean. Because okay. um, when my formal dean, she got a job offer to be a provost in what? other university. What's that mean, provost? Provost is like the vice president of academic affairs. Okay. Yes. Okay. And um, so when she become the provost, mm -hmm. and um, so there's a vacancy for the dean, and then then um, so I was honored to ask to be the interim dean, and then um, then um, I had to go through the formal search process to become the formal dean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you get recommended to become dean? Is it like kind of like? Hey, we all think that Ray Ling should be the next dean. Yeah, um, yes, and also um, the essentially the provost, the VP of Academic Affairs, mm -hmm. would appoint an interim dean first, mm -hmm. and then then you go through the search process, the formal search process. Okay. Then you compete with other external candidates mm -hmm. for the position. Yeah. So basically, other external candidates while you were interning were also trying to apply for that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, when, when there's that opening. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations on being <laughs> the you. actual dean. Mm. Um, what year officially did you become the dean? Um, that was uh, in 2020. Okay. So I during actually the went pandemic. through this during the pandemic. Wow. Yes, yes. I still remember um, doing the, the Zoom interview during the pandemic okay. for, for the position, yes. Well, um, so how much has, actually, I'll go back a step. So what are the, the duties and the roles of a dean? Mm -hmm. And what are the duties of a role of a dean of college arts and letters? Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking that question. Mm -hmm. the, um, a general thing or themes that, that the deans do, regardless which college, is to manage the that department under a specific college, okay, and managing the the, the department chairs and the faculty and the staff okay. for that specific college, and also managing the budget. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the deans also responsible for personnel matters um, for the college, okay. and also. Responsible for the budget Got you. for the college. Would personal matters be like, oh, I'm having a disagreement with my colleague? Is that like a personal matter? Personnel problems, yes. Okay. Um, that would include, say, um, hiring of okay. new staff mm -hmm. or even the faculty or hiring a department chair. You mm. help um, facilitate the process of department chair search. And also deal with, say, um, complaints, okay. right? Okay. And working with the union, either uh, California Faculty Union or CSU EU, CSU Employee Union for okay. the staff with different units. Or um, for, for example, graduate associates, that will be Unit 11, that will be United Auto Workers. So you're working with different units, different unions mm. to address some of the concerns. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so what would be some of the specific roles that you would have to do as a dean for the College of Arts and Letters? Mm -hmm. For us, because our College of Arts and Letters has seven departments wow. plus liberal study. So we have RN design and we have communication studies, English, and music, mm -hmm. and philosophy, and theater arts, and world languages and literatures. 
and liberal studies. And so those are the seven department plus liberal study program. So I'm responsible for managing uh, the seven department plus the liberal study program. And wow. so, so it's very different. As I say, mm -hmm. for example, um, the needs for each department are very different. For example, th let's just use your music department mm -hmm. as an example. As you know, you play different instruments, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes each instrument is almost like a different language. You, you yes. cannot assume a faculty who teach violin will know how to teach um, a wind instrument, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will not expect a faculty who... Um, teach percussion, could teach choir, right? Yeah, yeah. So, it, so in a way, each instrument is almost like a different language, right? Mm -hmm. And where, of course, our world language literature, different languages are, are very different. You wouldn't expect a professor to teach Spanish, teach Chinese, right? Yeah. Yeah. And same thing with art and design. In the art and design, each medium for the art, Say, for example, um, ceramic versus glass mm. versus woodworking yeah. versus um, photography. You wouldn't expect a professor who is a photographer could teach a student how to blow glass, right? Yeah. Which could be quite dangerous. A very. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's the complexity of our... Our, our colleges is some of the departments is almost like a many different department within a department. Yeah. Yeah. Like subcategories. Yes. Yes. Wow. Um, you know, um, and thank you for the work that you're doing. You know, I know it's thank you. not easy, especially during the pandemic, trying to, trying to, you know, bring college and student life back and faculty working back after the pandemic. And how actually has been, you know, being uh, in charge and being the dean from 2020 till now and the challenges that you had to face to get everything moving, you mm -hmm. know, which I'm pretty sure is a lot different than it was probably 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking this question. Again, I'm sure what I'm facing is not long. And um, so I think really pandemic really changed everything. Mm -hmm. For example, the teaching modality, right? During the pandemic, we have to switch over to everything online, mm. even though now we try to repopulate the campus. Many faculty still feel not safe to come back, right? Okay. They, they, okay. they, they read the news, you know, search of Omicron, all the triple endemic, you know, right? Right now that we are facing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of faculty still don't feel safe to come back. And... A lot of faculty and students, well, they still feel like they want to teach online classes mm -hmm. or they want to take online classes. And um, and same with the staff. During the pandemic, we had to uh, switch the way how we work. We work from home, and some staff much prefer to work from home mm -hmm. than try to come back. So for me, try to see, like, everybody's coming back. I cannot just except that it's not possible. Mm. Some faculty or some staff would much still prefer to to um, teach remotely, to work remotely. And so it, it's great to see students back, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with the re understanding that the way how we teach, how we do work, is very different right now. Yeah. That the, the working... Um, physically uh, on campus, sometimes maybe not the best option for some people. Mm -hmm. um, taking the face-to-face -face classes might not be uh, viable for some of our students. And also what I see, one of the big challenges for our students, you know, and I see the, um, my own daughter as well. My daughter took her class. She's, she's 16 years old, and so she was a high school student. Mm -hmm. And when her first year in high school, she had to take all classes virtually. And I really could see the impact on her and how does that affect her. And I could see that in my students as well. Mm. Um, and I see that even we repopulate our campus, I could still see that we have some student 
um, the pandemic affect their um, their work, their family,、mm-hmm. some student,、um, their physical health, their mental health due to the pandemic, and some student they just simply don't show up in、yeah. class anymore. And I have become, I almost,、uh, to be honest with you, I become almost numb. Every day, I I receive email notification from risk management about you know your location in this building.、Um, there's some report somebody have COVID, and、okay. and you are not perceived to be someone who had direct contacts, but there's、um, reporting of COVID cases in、mm-hmm. this classroom and this building, and I have received that. Every day, every day, to the point I just felt okay. That's another email from、mm-hmm. the risk management notification about,、um, you know, cases of COVID, right?、Wow. And so, yeah, I do think that the things just never gonna be the same、mm-hmm. ever again. And it's you know, I feel like remote work seems easier for a lot of the other, like you know, like if you're a computer science major, it's easy to do remote work, but. We're in the arts where people need to like be like hands on, face to face, which is a lot more difficult, in my opinion, to do more remote stuff. You、yes. know, and remote learning and understanding. Yeah, right. Like, wh- which instrument do you play? Piano. Piano, right?、Mm-hmm. It might be harder to play or take piano lesson virtually,、mm-hmm. right?、Um, because the sound, even you try to do the. Um, hear the sound recording through Zoom is different, right? Maybe there was always a nanosecond of delay, and for for musician, that few seconds of delay means a lot, right?、Mm-hmm. And so that's why, especially for our college, our music department, our theater arts, it's kind of hard to learn acting when you're or having a, a theater play、mm-hmm. when you cannot do it. Face to face, right? And same thing with our art、uh, and design department. It's kind of hard to learn how to turn the table for the ceramic, how to blow glass if、yeah. you don't have the actual hands-on experience working in the glass furnace. You know, having、mm-hmm. the temperature and know how to control the temperature when you blow the glass, and that's not something you can learn from Zoom. Yeah. You need to actual hands-on experience. You got to be there, yeah. Because,、yeah. like, for example, like if you're playing the violin via Zoom or any instrument, the teacher will be like, they'll usually take it from you and like physically show you, you know, this is how you should do it. Yeah. And you can't really yes get that understanding、right. via.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know,、um, years ago I was a student here at Cal State, and I believe I took one of your classes. You did Asian traditional cultures. Yes. Did you teach that class? Yes,、you、I、did. have a hundred eighty students, a hundred sixty-eight. There's so many that it's hard for me to imagine. You know, every single like remembering every single student. Of course, yes, of that's course, great. That of was course.、Good. Yeah, I remember <laughs> taking. So it's beautiful to see you from teaching that big classroom、mm-hmm. thing down here in、uh, UH downstairs.、Uh, you're teaching. Yes,、it. I remember UH one hundred six. Yeah,、yes. you're teaching in there to see. You know, you、um, be promoted and elevated to、um, to becoming dean. So, congratulations!、Mm-hmm. Thank you. And I remember,、um, I think it was in Thailand. I'm not sure if it was Thailand or Taiwan.、Um, and for, forgive me for being wrong, but I remember you, you showed us these pictures of these huts, these huts that were there. They were like ancient huts that were. I think it was Thailand. Could be wrong, but they're ancient huts that were there from like the ancient people. And I remember I asked you. I was like, "Those huts look like the same huts from、uh, Ethiopia."、Mm-hmm. And then you, and then I remember you told me you're like, "Well, yeah, a lot of people believe that the Ethiopian people who lived here, you know, and they that they did that to make those huts." And I was just like, "Oh man, wish we would have wish we would have talked about that a little bit in class."、Mm-hmm. You know, I just thought it was so cool because a lot of people、um, don't know. Majority of people don't know the African influence and the connection between Africa and Asia, and stuff like that. And so I thought that would be really cool.、Um, but I remember seeing that in class and talking, and I was like, "Wow, that looks just like an Ethiopian hut." And I talked to you, and you're like, "Yeah, some people believe that it was." And I was like, "Wow, crazy!、Mm-hmm. Need to talk more about that."、Mm-hmm. Um, 
But, you know, um, recently something happened um, in the music department. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I'm pretty sure you know about exactly what I'm talking about. And it was an unfortunate situation. And uh, the performing arts building, I guess you could say. Yes. It, um, it happened to rain and it got flooded. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, what was your first thoughts when you were told this information about the performing arts art building got flooded? Um, what different thoughts ran through my mind? Um, I, I mentioned I was Buddhist, right? Mm -hmm. Life is impermanent, right? Okay, okay. Just when I feel, and some people probably feel the same way, that finally there's a, a sense of normalcy. We're somehow back to normal, quote unquote normal, yes. a little bit. Yes. The campus repopulated. It's so nice to see students, especially music department who suffer so much, and you know, music and theater department. During the pandemic, finally, people could take the class mm -hmm. in person. We could use the recital hall. We could finally come back, yes. right? Yeah. And the Omicron subsided. And now we are back with this big problem w with the flooding. So my first thought was, I feel it's so surreal that in 45 minutes, that the thunderstorm on September 11, that flooded the whole recital hall. Yeah. It looks like a swimming pool. So when I told, they told me about um, the pit, right, got flooded, mm. the electrical box in the pit, in the um, recital hall. And and they, um, they sent me the picture. I was just so stunned. Yeah. I, I felt like my worst nightmare came true. Mm. That, and I just really could not imagine when they say oh, this all happened in 45 minutes, the dilution of the water. And so it's not just the performing art and also the UH, the University Hall basement was so flooded. As well? The basement of this building wow. was totally flooded. The classroom, the, the lab, they were all destroyed. Wow. And this all happened in 45 minutes. So, yeah, so first I was, I could not believe this is actually happening. And the next reaction is, thing happened, and we need to try to, again, just brace ourselves for the onslaught of problems and challenges, and then just life goes on, mm -hmm. and just try to put one foot in front of the other and try to deal with the problem day by day and hopefully situation will be resolved yeah yeah the good thing is it's being taken care of now yes it's yeah. been taken care of and hopefully the the old recital hall will be reopened in march 2023 it 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 does take a long time to yeah. try to recover and mediate the problems so we deal with other uh, mediation of the problems uh, like the flood, um, the mold, and the res restoration of the property, um, restoration of the instrument if they could be repaired, or replacement of the instruments. Like um, some of our Steinway grand pianos are destroyed by oh, the flood. No. And so we had to figure out how to deal with the aftermath of the, the catastrophic damages caused by the flood. Yeah, that's probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm assuming. Yes. Um, but thank goodness it's being worked on now. And even on the brighter side, um, uh, okay, this is... Even on the brighter side, um, we have a new performing arts building yes. being created. Yes, right? it's very exciting. Yeah, which is, it's kind of perfect timing, I guess you can say, Correct. right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the new performing arts building? Yes, thank you so much. So this performing arts building, as you could tell, the, the old performing arts building 
really outlive its life expectancy. That's why we continue to have the maintenance problem, right? Yeah. Got flooded, and when it rain, then there's a the leak on the roof. The、mm-hmm. roof need to be replaced. There's ashtrays in the hallway, by the way, people. <laughs>、yeah. That's how old it is. <laughs> yes, and so、um, the the new performing art building will have. Um, the state of art equipment,、mm-hmm. audio, sound equipment, sound editing equipment, and we try to future proofing the the building.、Mm-hmm. So we have、um, we anticipate the future needs, right?、Um, so these are the things that the old performing art building won't be able to do. And this performing art has a performing art center has five hundred theaters. So for example. Um, one of the great thing for the music department is,、yeah. for example, we have the wonderful holiday gala, and in the past it's always a sold out performance, and we could not feed enough, sit enough people, and now with this new performing art building with five hundred seaters, so we could accommodate more seats, more audience, and there's also serve different functions other than the、um, state of the art technology, the five hundred seater theater,、mm-hmm. um, the, the performing arts center, and the newer building, the physical aspect, and there's the educational aspect because the,、um, the student will have a、um, Access to newer technology. For example, for music department,、um, music technology majors,、mm. they would have、um, access and they experience to work with newer technology for sound editing. And we also have the state of the art、uh, stage in the theater. So it'll be great for the the music and theater major and also the faculty.、Mm-hmm. So we will have the the physical place for student to learn. And to perform, and also for faculty to teach the student in in a place where they could continue to enhance their learning experience, their、um, their skill, either for the music or the theater major, and also for the the music major and theater major and the faculty to be able to perform、mm-hmm. in in the top notch facility. Yeah. So, so there's that educational quality, and there's that、um, that instructional components. There's that performance aspect, right? That 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 really elevate the quality of the performance for the music and the theater. So that's one important aspect. The second aspect is from the greater picture for the university. For example, this is part of the university. Uh, master plan in terms of our strategic plan because this performing arts center would change the look of the university、mm. will become the the kind of like front face of the university when people driving from the university parkway that will be the first building they will yeah, see yeah it will be so so that that tie into the university strategic goal、mm. and also. The master plan in terms of how we structure the the university and、um, how we present the university. That's one aspect. So, and so that ties into the the strategic goal of the university.、Mm-hmm. And the third part, which is also very important, which I'm very excited about, is this new performing art building will become the anchor of the Indian Empire. Mm. So the performing art、um, building and the center will allow us to collaborate with other、um, organization in the Indian Empire. It, so it become an an anchor. So again, going back to the the、um, the strategic plan, we what are part of our goal is to be the anchor for the Indian Empire.、Okay. So we want this to be that the music center for the. The Indian Empire. Gotcha. As so, well, so、yeah. like other like community bands or organizations yeah, can come and perform. Yeah, we also perform. We co- collaborate.、Mm. We say, for example, San Bernardino、um, Symphony,、mm-hmm. right?、Um, and so this will become part of the 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 center for the Indian Empire、um, region, and so part of that it help us serve that the whole region. Much better as well, and help us 
make that connection between and the partnership between the university and the community that we serve in in an empire. And one very important part is, as you know,、um, especially for our college, eighty nine percent of our students are from the Inland Empire area, okay, which is very severely underserved area, yes. right? And、um, so a lot of our students are first generation students.、Mm. Some of our students they live below poverty,、mm-hmm. and some of the students they don't even have the music instruments, right?、Yeah. They don't have the facility. And so th- that's why it helped us to to serve the the region much better. We could attract more students coming to us, and we could serve the student and give them the the help and the facility they need.、Mm. And this is one of the part that I, I I'm really、um, really looking forward to is to to become part of the the kind of like epic center. On the center of the Indian Empire in terms of performing arts. How super cool!、Mm-hmm. Um, when is the expected date for the project to be done? The the, the <clears throat> expected date for the the building to be done, we're looking at in twenty twenty four. Okay. Probably spring or fall twenty twenty four. Okay. So,、um, as you know, because you know the.、Um, The、uh, supply chain, and so、mm-hmm. there might be some delay. But、uh, to be safe, th- that's when we feel that that will be a safe time to to be able to、okay. to really in fully operation. That'd be super cool. I remember hearing, and I could be wrong because I think I was at the, I was at the groundbreaking ceremony yes, that yes, they had thank here. Thank you. Yes. Yes.、Uh, um, I think they were mentioning that they wanted to have like. Professional performers come. Yes, right. That's also a thing, right? That、mm-hmm. you guys want to do as well.、Mm-hmm. That's going to really bring even more attention and yes, more、yeah. impact to the yes,、yeah. community and school. And right. And usually, the way it works is if we bring、um, outside entertainment, that also helps the economic development of yeah, the city、exactly. as well. Yeah, that's right. Thank、But、you so much for it. It, it helps economic growth in the Inland Empire region as well. Which is super cool. Come on, arts, we're gonna do this. Yes, yes, we're gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, and so, is there a plan to demolish the old building to expand even the new building? Is that a is that a is that a plan?、Um, part of the the deal is to、um, to have the new building, but we will not、um, abolish the old building. We will renovate. Okay, that's part of the budget we receive from the chancellor's office、okay. is to renovate the old building, and in addition to that, we have a new building. Gotcha. So the two will be connected. Yes. Okay.、Yeah. They will be not physically attached to each other,、mm-hmm. so there will be a little walkway, but they will be very close to each other. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And、uh, how tall will the new、uh, performing arts building be? Four stories? Oh no, no! It will be more like. The, more like that you you have the、um, the first floor and the ground level, okay, and some of that will be for the music,、um, for example, private lessons、mm. and practice room, the music library, okay, and you know、um, for for example the theme shop, you know, for the theater departments, right,、mm-hmm. the costume shop, and so there will be、um, some the ground level will be for. More like for、um, the classroom usage, the individual private practice room,、uh, private lesson,、mm-hmm. and also some theater、um, classes. So for some music studio as well. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to come back and yes, see. Yes, you'll have the, to come back. Yeah, I'll definitely come back and party. We're gonna have yes, to party. Please do. Yeah, please it's do. gonna be a big party. I know it's gonna be yes, a big party. Yes, yes, yes.、Um, uh, so I remember you talking about theater earlier.、Yes. So, what's the American theater? What has been your most、uh, favorite American theater that you've watched or play that you've seen? Oh, w- one of the things that I love. We used to do that before pandemics. Every during the, every holiday,、um, the Christmas and New Year holiday, we will go to、um, New York City because、oh, wow. we'll fly out to New Jersey. Um, to visit our relative,、mm-hmm. and then we take the public transportation to New York City. Cool. And then we will watch some shows in the Broadway. Okay. Yeah. 
So the we have seen best. several. So we saw the Harry Potter. Okay, there's a play for Harry Potter. Yes. Okay. And um, um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And, okay. And so, um, so and is two part series too. So you have to watch the different days. Gotcha. Is it written by J.K.? Is yes. It, is yes. It? Is is written by her wow. and then produced by her. Wow. And Smart she felt that the show must be done. Um, in the theater, okay, and um, actually, and so they they had the the performance in New York City. And it was quite, it's really truly spectacular. Okay, kind of blown you away mm. in terms of the stage design, all this thing, and then ever since then, actually, they um they they have shortened the play to mm. into just one play as opposed to. Um, you know, two parts, yeah. right? Boo. And for example, when they did it in in San Francisco, they they shorten it and it, it only into kind of just one performance as okay. opposed to two part. Um, so it's spectacular. It's great. I, I love that. And Hamilton, of course. Hamilton. Right? I, actually, I saw Hamilton in Chicago when I was at a conference. Okay. What was your first impression of Hamilton when you saw it? It was amazing, okay. right? When they 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 sing the rap, yeah, you know, it's and the um, the performers so so um, talented, mm -hmm. and also it's very his, it's a historical play, but don't yes. you feel it's so resonating right now as well? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, so yeah, and I also saw the Wicked. Okay, it was really good and in, in New York City. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So yeah, those, those are wonderful plays that I have seen. I have seen other ones, but those are one that really, really stood out Got for you. me. Yeah, yeah. The, the storyline for Hamilton is definitely very interesting as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned many times that you are a Buddhist. Yes. Born and raised a Buddhist. I was born and raised as Buddhist. Yes. Got you. How has being a Buddhist affected and helped you in your work life and being a dean yes thank you so much for asking that you you have mentioned about the the buddhas right mm -hmm. um and you mentioned about the suffering right mm -hmm. life is suffering mm -hmm. right and so one of the big important aspect of buddhist philosophical underpinning is the sense why we have suffering. Part of it is because it's attachment. Okay. Mm. So there's just so much part of it is um, not having the sense of attachment. So like, why are we feeling down? It may be because we are attached to certain things too much, right? There's things we are not, have, we're having problem letting go. Right, so so I find some some of the Buddhist teaching to be very resonating, and very useful for me. It's this notion of, you know, non-attachment, right? Okay, okay. And how does that relate to my work? For example, as a dean, I deal with different um, personnel problem, conflicts, complaints, mm -hmm. right? Different uh, disagreements, right? And I. Sometimes, again, and that's when I find the Buddhist teaching to be very helpful for me. Mm -hmm. I had to circa not having this, this sense of attachment, not attaching my own self-ego. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if people don't disagree with me, I don't feel like my female ego is being under attack. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. So it allowed me to deal with things more calmly mm -hmm. and, and be able to um, detach my own ego um, from the situation that I'm facing. So the, the sense of non-attachment, I find it to be very helpful for mm -hmm. me. Another one will be the sense of life is impermanence, okay. which also tie into not having the attachment. Yes. Right? Again, um, I never expect a 45 minutes flood would destroy our recital hall yeah. in the old performing our building. Right, so sometimes that's why you cannot control life. Mm -hmm. But what you could do is control yourself, your emotions, and not to be so attached to things, e either your own personal ego or your your um, physical or material um, wealth. Yes, or your financial wealth, or your your belonging, because mm -hmm. or e even your your personal. Um, Life, you know, your pets that you love, the the family people that are close to you, 
right? Like I, I lost my mom and my dad, right? And um, it was a very difficult time. But mm. having the Buddhist teaching that really helped me understand that um, life is impermanent. I could not expect mm. my parents will live forever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So I, 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 I think those two are the things that really helpful for me to um, become part of my moral compass. That um, another one is again, that, again that that I'm here to serve, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a sense of there's this phrase called servant leadership. Oh, right? interesting. Um, and sometimes I feel that's kind of. Um, part of my moral compass. Okay. Again, not having self ego. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing this for the better good, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I'm I'm here as a dean to serve the college, to serve the people who work with me, right? I don't feel I have ownership over them. I see them; they are my partners. Yes, along the same journey, mm-hmm. however long it would take, or however short it would take, mm-hmm. right? And I'm here to serve the better good. Yep. To to help the student, help the faculty, help the society, right? Mm-hmm. Help the community that we serve. Uh, it's not about me, right? And and so that that notion of. Um, Serving other people, the servant leadership mm-hmm. is not by my own gratification. It's very important, right? So that kind of Buddhist teaching that really helped me to be humble, to serve, to be considerate, to think about other people. And the other one, and then uh, going back to what we discussed, that perhaps everything there's some sort of cosmic connection, mm. right? Yeah. The fact you and right. I, we even have the interview. Right, there's some sort of comic connection there, right? And the fact that you were my student before and you're mm-hmm. your alumnus, right? Yeah. We have some sort of connection somehow, mm-hmm. right? And because there's that some sort of um, cosmic connection or karmic connection, there's some sort of karma, mm-hmm. right? Again, always cherish the moment that yeah. we share, right? Ooh, say that again for people. Yeah. Cher- right. Say that one more time. Cher- Cherish the moment that we share. There's some sort of comic connection, you know, and we're here together. Perhaps there's some reason. And cherish the moment that we have, however long or however short mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are the things that I find it very helpful to me, that there's an interconnection um, and that I'm not here doing it just for myself, for my own good. And that we are somehow... Is connected. The world is somehow connected. I love it. I believe it. Yeah, I believe we're all interconnected. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything's connected. Yeah, you think about global warming and, and all that. Yeah, right? everything's connected. Yeah. Even if you learn about like uh, fungi, mushrooms. Yes. Uh, how they're inter- like they're like a system interconnected underneath the earth that people don't even realize. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know you're doing so much work here. Um, Dr. Reiling, and thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank, thank you, you for, um, I like your philosophy. Um, I, 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 <clears throat> uh, when I was searching um, for, because I believe every person needs to search for like their purpose in life and yeah. like, why am I here? Mm-hmm. In my in my ser- personal searching, I was, um, I came across Buddhism mm-hmm. and Buddhism was one of my favorite um, ways of life and, and looking at life. Um, um, so it's nice to, sit and talk with a Buddhist. Thank you. Um, so as a dean, and I guess you can talk about outside of dean work if you'd like, what current projects are you working on? Um, and you can have a sip of water if you want. I don't want to sure? dry, dry you out here. I'm drying her out like a cactus. So, you mm-hmm. know, we're in the desert. I'm drying her mm-hmm. out. Got to let her get some water. You know what I mean? Uh, current project that we are working on, the big one, of course, is the problem in our building. And to try to restore the, the old performing art building. And we also have some very fun, exciting project for the college. For example, we are going to launch the speech language pathology program so we could train future speech pathologists. Okay, to help people like... Um, yeah, uh, speech impediment yes, and gotcha. people who couldn't talk after car accident or stroke, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. And so this really, really needed in this area. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. As aging population or younger people, right? When okay. people, eat, they have problems, or like, a, say, for example, um, people who grow up bilingual background, mm -hmm. right? Um, oh, for younger kids who have, you know, a problem with um, speech, mm -hmm. with their talk, right? If you have a stutter or something? Yes, all that, right? Mm -hmm. Or older people swallowing disorder, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so we don't have, um, in our area, we don't have that kind of program that's affordable for our students, uh -huh. right? Right. University of Redland has that, right? But it's more expensive. Definitely. We definitely want to have a CSU <clears throat> campus here in the Inland Empire to have that program. It's um, amazing. We are, we are thinking about um, launching a certificate program on immersive uh, storytelling as a certificate program. Wow. What would that, yeah. can, what would that mean? Immersive, so immersive storytelling. Uh, you, you imagine, you know, like people doing a game design, right? Okay. And okay. Then, then you think about people play games, and there's yes. a lot of story that propel the games, oh, right? Oh, yes, 100%. So, right? So that, GTA. That's, yeah, that's part of the immersive storytelling, mm -hmm. right? Or doing the design, right? You doing the the um, stop motion animation and mm. there's a lot of stories so, or the creative writing and the script writing to yeah. have that immersive learning experience, right? Or doing, you look at in the museum world, right? The way how we look at museum is there's more interactive as well too. Okay. So we are trying to do that, kind of inject new innovative idea um, for for the students and, and also train future professional in that kind of field. Yeah. And um, so that's another one. Um, another one coming up. We're hoping in the future we'll, we'll launch blended program. We call four plus one, and students could get their BA degree, okay, and they continue on to get their master's degree. Whoa! And then and they would double count like a twelve unit when they are taking the undergraduate degree. They could also take the graduate degree at the same time. Yes. Wow. And and then so they could finish their their BA and MA degree in five years. That is awesome. And it's combined together. We call it a blended program. That is so awesome. I'm very excited about. We are in the talk of preparing for that blended program for, for BA and MA degree. That is awesome. So those are the huge projects that we have, um, you know, college right now. Oh, man. I'm a little jealous. Yes, <laughs> please come back. Please come. <laughs> and in fact, we even talk about the, the blended program for a possible music major. Okay. We don't have a music master's degree, and we are hoping that we'll create that the blended program. Gotcha. Yes. I'm really interested in the immersive and mm -hmm. the and the speech. Yes, yes. Would ASL be under the speech as well, you think? Um for ASL we already have that for the world language literature. Okay. It's part of the, the languages. Okay. We consider ASL as part of the language. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have a a museum here on campus, correct? Correct, yes. Uh do are you do you have any involvement with that? Yes. The museum is under me as well. Okay. Under my supervision. And so we are um, we have the immense, um, really, really uh, famous Egyptian collection. Yes. Wow, out of all places, right, people? Yes, yes, because we have one very generous donor who gives us a lot of Egyptian antiquity. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to Egyptian collection, antiquities, we also have contemporary art. Mm -hmm. We also have ceramic collection. We have um, modern arts. And one thing also I really like about the museums, we also have a student exhibition yes. for our MFA student. And also end of each academic year, we have students doing their exhibition. Mm. So uh, again, different media, uh, ceramic, uh, glass, um, sculpture, photography. Mm -hmm. And um, um, of course, the the two two D you know painting right mm -hmm. drawing, and it's always so nice to see students' artwork and to showcase in their their complete products. Yeah. And really um, love watching them um, bring their work to fruition. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you come to our um, front office, you could see student work. So uh. each year we buy. Um, some piece of students' artwork and just proudly display student artwork That's in our dean's awesome. office. 
That's yes. what I saw out there. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Dr. Raylin Chuang, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Did I say your name right? I hope I did. Yes. I was so impressed that you pronounced my name so correctly. Man, you know how we do. Yes. We do it right. Like the yes. video. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, let's say 100 years have passed, 150 years have passed by, right? Um, what would you like your empire to have looked like? Meaning, what would you like people to have known what Dr. Railing Shuang has done, whether academically, family-wise, community-wise? What would you like your empire to have looked like? Uh, well, first, again, um, as a Buddhist, I wouldn't think about like being so bold to think that I built an empire, right? Mm-hmm. I, I would say that then I would say um, my partners, right? my faculty, my team, my team, mm-hmm. right? My team and I, we, 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 um, we build the college and we took good care of it mm-hmm. when it's under our watch and would help it not just thrive and survive, would help it grow. And we were able to serve the community and to better this region. And so I hope that maybe, yeah, 100 years later, the, the new performing art building had been put to good use and our, our college continued to, to grow and continue to be at the forefront of innovation. And we find programs that people love and resonating, that they feel is timely and innovative. I love it. Mm-hmm. And... Um... I, I love it so much. And um, thank you so much again for being on the podcast. For if anybody wanted to know how to reach you, contact you, get more information on the immersive program, being a student here, or anything like that, can you please let us know how they can reach you? Yeah, the, well, one way is they could contact our college and um, they could send email to us, to our college. We always have people who... We would receive people's request, mm-hmm. and then um, and then then we'll answer people's questions. Or people could call me directly. My office number is nine zero nine five three seven three eight zero seven. Again, it's nine zero nine five three seven three eight zero seven. Or people could email me, and my email address is r c h u a n g at C-S-U-S-B dot E-D-U. But if it's too hard to remember it, please just go to our website, our C-S-U-S-B website, and look for College Arts and Letters, and there's contact information there. Boom. There it is, folks. And I'll put everything in the description so that way you can know how to reach her, reach the department. And um, I just want to thank you again, Thank doctors. you so much for interviewing yeah, of me. Of course. Thank you for being <laughs> on the you. podcast. So much cool stuff, right? Yeah, thank you so much learned. for your great questions. Uh, of course. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> you know, we try to work hard here, you know, try to make it interesting and informative, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, great things, right, you guys? Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. You're listening to The Empire Podcast. If you want to support, you can go to through Cash App, dollar sign, T-H-E-E, Empire Podcast. Again, my name is Antonio The Miles. I'm your host. And I just want to thank you guys for checking in and we wouldn't be here without you. And other than that, we will catch you in the next one. Peace. Bye. (laughs) I say it's my duty. Yeah. Is it my will? Yeah. To do what? Yeah. To do what's right. Is that very long? No. And was it long winded or no? No. For me, it's not. Okay. For me, it's not. Did it feel long-winded to you? No, no. But I had to remember. <laughs>